Welcome to my lecture online. So, what is life? How do we define life? And it turns out there are individuals that will think of things and say, well, then that's life too. For example, they may argue that a car is a life because a car will have the same kind of properties that we would assign to living things. And maybe people will come along and they say, well, a crystal is alive because it grows, it takes in material, it makes copies of itself. Well, it depends how you want to look at things and how, do you, how you want to stretch things. So here we're not really in the business of getting into philosophical arguments about whether or not a car is alive or whether or not a crystal is alive or a bunch of other things that we come up with. And of course, viruses is one of those topics that we'll discuss later that has some definitions of life and some where it doesn't fit the definition. So it turns out that there are things that may not fit all of the definitions that we would assign to life. But I think most of us can pretty well put things in one of two buckets, life and non-life. And there are some that kind of skirt the edges a little bit, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. But what we can do is set up a bunch of characteristics and say that life mostly will fall within these categories. Before we do that, let's take a look at this right here. Let me move out of the way so you can see it. But let's take five potential categories we can, uh, or uh, properties we can assign to life. So life uses energy, life can move, life can reproduce, life uses oxygen, life can grow, life can expel waste. So we'll look at these four things, cars, crystals, trees, and animals. And let's say that, well, all four of them can use energy. Chemically, crystals to grow do need energy. Without energy, they wouldn't grow. They need heat. And therefore, you'd say that all four would fall into the category or would have the property that they can utilize energy. Of course, it's probably pushing the envelope a little bit on crystals. And for cars, well, we'll fill the car with gasoline or with electricity, with charges. That's energy. And therefore, they can do the things that they need to do. How about moving? Notice that cars would be considered more alive then trees, because trees don't move, well, they can bend in the wind, but they can't start walking and go somewhere else. Cars can do that. And nowadays, on their own, because we have cars that are driverless cars. Crystals don't move. They grow, but they don't move. They don't walk up and go somewhere. Animals can move. Reproduce. Can cars reproduce? No, not yet. That would be a good thing if we could. Crystals, in a way, reproduce. We can cut a crystal in half. Now you have two crystals. They're small parts of the original. Trees can reproduce. Animals can reproduce. How about use oxygen? Well, cars definitely use oxygen. They, gasoline cars do not run without oxygen. Crystals, there's crystals that contain oxygen atoms, so they grow using oxygen. We have trees that use oxygen and animals use oxygen. How about grow? Well, cars don't grow. Once you make a car, they're the same size forever. Crystals can grow, trees grow, so can animals grow, and expel waste. Well, car has a, a way of getting rid of the waste product, so yes, they do. Crystals don't, trees do, and animals do. So you can see that only one category, animals, has all of these six properties. But notice that two things that we, most of us would not consider live do contain quite a few of the properties. Four for car and three to four for crystals, five for trees and six for animals. So you can see that when you start listing these things and start categorizing things and assigning properties to things, you don't always get a clear-cut answer to that. And especially when if we're starting to look for life in, the other, in other places, you may not necessarily find the same kind of life that we have on the earth. Most likely, you'll find something very different. That would actually be quite exciting to find life somewhere else and to see what it looks like. But I think we can probably all agree that life mostly has these types of capabilities or properties assigned to them. For example, life contains cells or structures in an organized matter. Life has structures that are made from carbon-based molecules, organic chemistry. And yes, some people propose that life could be based on silicon because silicon can also make four bonds just like carbon. We'll see later that the ability for silicon to, to have strings and, and have the kind of bond strength to keep life together, well, it's not nearly as good as carbon. And for other reasons, it's very unlikely that silicon could be the basis for life in other places. Carbon is by far the best choice. Life 
is able to grow and repair itself primarily. Life is able to reproduce. Life is able to take in food or material for growth, reproduction, and movement. Life can pass on hereditary traits. Life is able to expel waste. Life, some are able to move, like trees don't move, although they can bend in the wind. Um, respond to environmental conditions. Even flowers respond to environmental conditions. They open and close depending upon being daytime or nighttime, sunshine or not sunshine. Uh, sense their environment and utilize and or absorb energy. So if we're going to start talking about life, most life will fulfill all of these. But in other words, they will have properties associated with all 11. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. We could probably think of other things, but this is a pretty good list. And if we're going to take something that we find somewhere in space and we start comparing it to these categories, we can probably decide if we're looking at life or if we're not looking at life. I think most of us using honest scientific methods to determine if it's life or not, I think we'll make a pretty good set. We can come up with a good set and we can apply that set and really determine if it's life or not. So even though some people may say, well, it may be very difficult to determine this is life, I think it may not be quite as hard as we think. And this is a good set, at least to start with, to look at life. And if we find something that might look like life, let's start looking at these categories. It's a good start. So people with the fire. Fire, that's right, I didn't do that. Let's see, fire. Fire uses energy, it moves, it reproduces, it uses oxygen, it grows, and expels waste. It does all of those things. Wow. Thank you. Fire. Look at that. So is fire alive? I think if we're honest with ourselves, fire would not be considered life. Well, yeah. it's, it, it's a philosophical response to the question, not a scientific response to the question. <laughs> I see another expression that doesn't seem to agree with me. <laughs> Ice uh, uses energy, it expels energy in order to freeze up water turning into ice, I don't know. It moves, well, not on its own, reproduces, well, not really. Uh, uses oxygen, not really, grows, I uh, know, that, that's a far stretch. I don't think ice would really deserve to be on that list. Robert Frost's poem. Robert Frost's poem, yep. Fire and ice. Fire and ice. Good poem. <laughs> Very good poem. <laughs> it tells you how the world would end. Fire or ice. We'll find out, won't we? It will suffice either way. Either way will be okay. No, it's not okay. It's suffice. Suffice. One or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right.